Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grandstand Sports Data, your home for sports analysis, statistics, and unbiased handicapping. So if you're a fan of diving deep into the world of sports analytics, you're in the right place. Today, we've got an exciting video lined up for you. We're taking a leap into the future by simulating the 2023 NFL season using our football betting model. Now, if you're new to Grandstand Sports Data community, don't worry, we've got you covered. Take a peek at some of our past videos from the last season to get a taste of how our model handicaps games. And hey, if you're liking what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up. That would be super appreciated. Plus, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's not just free, but it's a high five to us showing you that you're loving our content. All right, no more waiting. Let's dive right into the 2023 NFL season simulation. So let's start here with week one. And I'd like to cover a few things before I start. So with this betting model, it's basically, it gives us a projected score, a projected spread, obviously, because it comes along with this, the score, and it also does a total. Now, we won't be showing really totals here. I mean, it will be, because you could see from our final score that we have. But what we're basically saying is that you're going to see some teams pop up as 17 or 16 and 0. And... That's not saying that they're going to win every game. Obviously, people are wrong. Betting lines are wrong. Yada, yada. It's just saying that they're favorited in every game. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Also, this isn't assuming injuries as well. So this is assuming whatever team is rolling out as of week one. So this is more of our preseason handicap of all the teams and what the season is going to look like. In the first couple of weeks, we're only going to cover our, the key matchups, I guess I would call it. As you could see, Cincinnati and Cleveland, we would call that a key matchup. With Cincinnati, will be defeating the Cleveland Browns 27-24. Then we have the Miami Dolphins versus the Los Angeles Chargers, where we will see Miami defeating them 24-23. Finally, for another key matchup, I believe that the Monday Night Football game between Buffalo and the New York Jets would be a key matchup, where you would see Buffalo win in 26-21. So let's move on to Week 2. We have a few key matchups here. I believe Kansas City and Jacksonville. I guess I, the model likes them in terms of a key matchup. And by key matchup, I mean they rank them in terms of their respective ranking. So kind of, I guess, a spoiler alert. Kansas City ranks as number one, whereas I believe the Washington Commanders or the Houston Texans rank number 32. But the higher your rank is, the higher the game score. And that's what qualifies it as a key matchup to us. Um, next would be Baltimore and Cincinnati. Cincinnati would be getting the win there, 27 to 21. And then finally, we would finish with the key matchup of the New York Jets versus the Dallas Cowboys, where the Dallas Cowboys would be coming up on top. And as you can see on the left side, you'll see the AFC standings in the playoff picture. And on the right side, you'll see the NFC standings in the in that playoff picture. Now coming in, in week three. Week three, there's not many key matchups. It's more of a lopsided week. Um, the games are really heavy favorites, and um, I mean, there's nothing really to touch on in terms of key matchup games or anything of the like. Um, also, another thing we didn't touch on, if you guys want to pause and see your favorite team and the results that we have for our model. So these are all based on our model. Just reminding everyone, we take in our model, we put in the results, and then we plugged it into this website. But if you want to see your favorite team and we're moving too fast, you can always click pause, take a look, and we'll see where we have them. Week four. Week four, we as if ever as a key matchup would be the Miami Dolphins at the Buffalo Bills. See, the Buffalo Bills would be winning that game 27 to 21. Next key matchup would be Kansas City versus the New York Jets. I guess some people would be looking for an offensive showdown there. We have a 31 to 21 score for the Kansas City Chiefs. And then for the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns, we have a 24 to 23 game for the Cleveland Browns. Just a heads up, our model really likes Cleveland this year. Um, and also another heads up, they really like the New Orleans Saints. They don't really like the New Orleans Saints for what people would think. Like, it's not necessarily them. It's just their strength of schedule. They have one of the easiest schedules in the NFL. Now moving on. Key matchup here in week five. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Buffalo Bills. We have in that game's in England. We have Buffalo winning 30 to 20 in that game. And then for the second key matchup, we have the Dallas Cowboys going to the San Francisco 49ers, where we have the 49ers edging them out 24 to 23. So those are the only two key matchups we have for week five. 
Going on to week six, we have the San Francisco 49ers at the Cleveland Browns as one of um, the key matchup games there, where San Francisco would be beating the Cleveland Browns 23 to 21. Then we have the Philadelphia Eagles going to the New York Jets, where the New York Jets will be losing that one as well, 27 to 21 to Philadelphia. And then Dallas will be going to Los Angeles to play the Chargers, where we have the Cowboys winning that game 27 to 23. And Chargers coming off of a bye from the last week in week five. Now moving on to week seven. Week seven, we have the Chargers versus the Kansas City Chiefs, where the Kansas City Chiefs had a little bit of a long layoff. Um, or they played in the Thursday night game before that, or the, or the week before that. That's what that indicates, that little icon. And Kansas City would be winning that game 31-20, to whereas the Miami Dolphins would be going to Philadelphia and losing that game 23-28. to So Philadelphia, those are the two key matchups for the Week 7. Now going into Week 8. Week 8, we only have one key matchup here. We have the Cincinnati Bengals at the San Francisco 49ers, where we have the 49ers winning 24-23. to Beating Cincinnati, and that's Cincinnati coming off of a bye. Remember, this is all based on technical analysis and based off of, I guess, it's it's based on all technical analysis. It's based on all of our statistical models that we do during the regular season. You'll see it in our key matchups uh, episode as well that should be put out within the next few days. Um, if you want to check out some old ones, we did some old ones last year. And we did one in the Super Bowl. We did one every week. So you could look at our past NFL bill, um, in our NFL playlist, and that will show some of the weekly matchups that we do. And that's the model that it's based on. Now we have a few key matchups here in week nine. The stuff is then starting to get a little bit better here. We have the Miami Dolphins at the Kansas City Chiefs, where we have the Kansas City Chiefs beating them in Germany. And as you can see from the top left, Kansas City would be undefeated at this point at 9 0 where Buffalo would be going to Cincinnati. And we have Cincinnati beating Buffalo 24-23 to in a very close matchup. Um, that would actually bring Buffalo closer to the pack in terms of Cincinnati Bengals. They'd bo- uh, Buffalo would be 8-1, and one, where Cincinnati would be 7-1. and one. So Cincinnati kind of narrowing the margin or, or uh, making the margin a little thinner there. Uh, Chargers would be going to the New York Jets, where the New York Jets would be defeating them. And then we have the Dallas Cowboys playing Philadelphia, which I believe those are the, basically the two best teams in the NFC in terms of who's returning. Some people may say the 49ers, but I think that they have a little bit of a question at quarterback. We've seen him for, I mean, a little less than half of a season, and people are already thinking he's Jesus Christ himself. So I think we need to calm down with the Brock Purdy thing and kind of see him in the regular season and see how he does and see how he can hold up in a 17-game uh, season. But... For now, we have Philadelphia beating the Cowboys just to come off of that tangent I went off of. And Philadelphia would be staying undefeated at 9-0. and On to Week 10. Week 10 now, we have the Cleveland Browns going to the Baltimore Ravens. We have the Ravens winning 24-23 there. And then we have, for our second key matchup, the San Francisco 49ers at the Jacksonville Jaguars. So kind of a little bit of a, I guess, a slow week, you could say, in the NFL schedule. Um, where San Francisco would be beating Jacksonville 24-21. As you can see from the updated standings, we have about four undefeated teams still remaining in terms of the betting model. I know, people are going to get crazy. Hey, man, how can you have all these undefeated teams? It's based on a betting model. So they're just the favorite in these games. Remember, they're the favorite in these games in a sport in a game of inches. So things happen where they won't be undefeated. These are just the simulations, and these are just the projections. Going on to the key matchups for Week 11, we have the Cincinnati Bengals going to the Baltimore Ravens, where Cincinnati Bengals would be winning 24-21. to Then we have the Jets going to Buffalo, where the Jets would be, I believe that would be their second loss to Buffalo, if I can remember. And um, we have the Philadelphia Eagles playing Kansas City in a rematch of the Super Bowl, both coming off buys, where Kansas City would be beating them 27-20. to So remaining undefeated. Someone Zoe had got to go, so the Eagles would be dropped down to 9-1. and one. Moving on to Week 12. Week 12, we've got a few games here. We have about four games that look pretty enticing to watch, where we have the Miami Dolphins defeating the New York Jets in New York. We would have Pittsburgh losing to the Cincinnati Bengals 
in Cincinnati, 27-21. to And then we have the Baltimore Ravens going to the Los Angeles Chargers, which the Los Angeles Chargers will be defeating them in pretty much inching closer to that playoff uh, hunt, as you can see on the left side. And then we'd have Buffalo versus Philadelphia, where Philadelphia would be beating Buffalo and kind of knocking them down a peg with Cincinnati winning in terms of that playoff hunt. Moving on to week 13, and I would call this a slow week. We only have really one key matchup. It would be the San Francisco 49ers going to the Philadelphia Eagles and losing to the Philadelphia Eagles 26-23, thus making the Eagles climb a little bit further in their conference going into week 14. In week 14 here, two matchups we have. We have the Buffalo Bills versus the Kansas City Chiefs. This is always, um, I guess in the world of wrestling, they call it a slobber knocker. Kansas City defeating Buffalo. That's what our model has. So Kansas City staying undefeated while Philadelphia will go to Dallas and will lose to Dallas. So Dallas getting a huge win in terms of inside the division. Both teams would go to 11-2 and two there. Moving on to week 15. Week 15, and this is where we start getting into playoff implications. We have the New York Jets in the, at the Miami Dolphins. That would be our first key matchup where we have Miami winning that football game, 24-21. to Then we would have Minnesota at Cincinnati, and Minnesota would be losing to Cincinnati. That would be another key matchup. And then we have Dallas going to Buffalo where Buffalo would defeat them, 26-23. to so some of our playoff imp implications. We have Cincinnati at 13 and one, and Cincinnati will be playing in the following week. We'll be playing Pitts Pittsburgh. Sorry, we'll be playing Pittsburgh, who is in the playoff hunt. They're about the ninth seed now, but going into next week, we'll see how it goes. I believe Cincinnati will be going into Pittsburgh. Um, another playoff implication will be Buffalo. Buffalo's uh, the third seed right now in the AFC, and we'll be going into Los Angeles to play the Chargers who are in that last AFC spot as of right now, week 15, at 10-4. and four. Then we have a key matchup of Miami Dolphins versus the Dallas Cowboys in week 16. Uh, as you can see, Dallas is, you know, they're the fifth seed. If there was no such thing as division, you know, division winners being seeded first, they're probably a little bit higher, maybe fourth there. But the Lions, they're winning their division in terms of that um, the weak north, I guess you would call it. Or I guess you wouldn't say weak north. It's a little bit up in the air, I would say, this season. Uh, Baltimore and San Francisco also in the hunt. So Baltimore is about, they would be tied in terms of record with the Chargers, but I believe on the tiebreaker makes them fall one peg lower in terms of the standings, where San Francisco, San Francisco is fighting for that second seed with the Eagles on their heels. So that will be a big matchup next week. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles versus the New York Giants is also a big, is a huge game in terms of the NFC East. So that's something to look out. We already touched on the Eagles, and the Giants are still in the hunt there, seven and seven at 500. But you know they're sitting in a weak NFC. I think that's what we can say um, without a doubt here is that the NFC is a little bit weaker than the AFC, or maybe not a little bit weaker, probably substantially weaker. Uh, next game would be the Detroit Lions at the Minnesota Vikings. Both teams are on the playoff bubble, um, or the Vikings are on the more on the playoff bubble, but they're in the same division. So a few wins here, a few wins there, head-to-head -head matchups with each other. That one included in the next week for Week 16. So let's take a look there and some of the results of those matchups. So here's some of the results of those matchups. We have Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Cincinnati defeating Pittsburgh 24 to 20. Then we have Buffalo defeating the Chargers 24 to 21. Then we have the Dallas Cowboys at the Miami Dolphins, which Dallas would be beating them 26 to 23. And then we have the Baltimore Ravens at the San Francisco 49ers with San Francisco taking that one. Giants at Philadelphia, Philadelphia obviously taking that one, and then Detroit going to Minnesota, where Minnesota would actually be, I guess you would call it pulling an up, upset, I mean, 
I think that they're pretty even on paper, but Minnesota would be at home, so Minnesota will be taking that one. In terms of the playoff implications, look at Kansas City. Kansas City still remains undefeated, but will be playing Cincinnati, the one versus the two, in Week 17. So a game to definitely look out for. Next game I guess I would look out for for next week would be the Jets and the Cleveland Browns. The Jets are on the playoff bubble. They really need a win there. If they don't win, they'll be eliminated from the playoffs in terms of this betting model. With the Browns at 12-3, and three, told you that this model was going to love the Browns. It's, it, it loves its uh, quarterback play as well as, as its defensive play. So they're really high on the Browns in terms of the betting model. Uh, Miami Dolphins playing the Baltimore Ravens in the next week. That is also a playoff bubble matchup, I guess I would call it, with the Dolphins sitting at the sixth seed and the Ravens sitting at the eighth. So Ravens really needing a win there. And then the Detroit Lions at the Dallas Cowboys with Detroit already getting a loss to Minnesota in week 16. Now they're playing Dallas, who is a tough team. And will it knock them lower with the Vikings if they win? Now we're talking about a divisional tie going into the final week. So let's take a look at the results for week 17. In week 17, covering some of those matchups that we already spoke on. Jets at Cleveland. We got Cleveland winning by one point, 24 to 23, and basically knocking the Jets out of the playoffs. Then we have the Miami Dolphins at the Baltimore Ravens, where the Baltimore Ravens would be winning that game also by a point, 24 to 23. That doesn't move the Ravens up into a playoff spot, but it inches them very closer, and now there's no room for error for any of those three teams, the Dolphins, Chargers, or Ravens. Kansas City at Cincinnati, I guess the game of the year that people were looking at, it would be in Kansas City, which people would call Burrowhead, and Joe Burrow would lose this game in terms of the model's project, project, projections. Sorry about that. 28-21. to 21. So we have Kansas City winning that one. Next would be Detroit and Dallas, which we spoke on. We have Dallas obviously winning that one, and now the Vikings would be moving up into that NFC North divisional first place seed, but putting them as the fourth seed in the NFC. While Detroit gets dropped all the way to the sixth seed, and with a bunch of teams who are sitting at eight and eight, it's something to look at. What can we look at going forward in the final week? Well, we can look at Kansas City Chiefs and the LA Chargers. LA Chargers are on the bubble, while Kansas City would be going for an undefeated season. Cincinnati would be going to Cleveland, which Cincinnati looks like they locked in that two seed, while Cleveland looks like they're not in the bubble. It looks like they locked up a playoff spot, and I guess it's probably playing. They're not even really playing for seeding because I'm not too sure if they can catch Cincinnati in terms of the tiebreaker, but who knows? We'll take a look. Buffalo at Miami. That should be a good um, AFC East matchup. Uh, Dolphins are really looking just they need a win in the Ravens to lose or for them both to win. I think that would lock up a shot for Dolphins to make the playoffs there. Then Baltimore would be playing Pittsburgh, which would be a good matchup for them. Pittsburgh is essentially out of the playoffs, but Baltimore is sitting at the, the, that cluster of 11 and 5 teams where two of them are going to make it. One's going to be left out. They don't want to be the one left out. Philadelphia playing the New York Giants. New York's basically battling for a playoff spot there, where Philly is basically locked up, I believe, in that third seed. Third seed. They really can't move anywhere from there. Minnesota will be going to Detroit. This is obviously the divisional game that everybody's looking for, and it's basically for the division. Um, Chicago at Green Bay. It looks like Green Bay is essentially eliminated, but Chicago is playing for a looks like a winning get-in, especially if the Giants are playing Philadelphia. Doesn't look like they're going to win, so Chicago could slide in. Let's take a look at the results for the last and final week, week 18. So here are the results. We have the Buffalo Bills playing the Miami Dolphins. We have Buffalo defeating the Miami Dolphins. But my, Miami does slide into that last seed, and they will draw the uh, Cincinnati Bengals in the first round. Baltimore playing Pittsburgh. We have Baltimore defeating Pittsburgh and actually moving into the sixth seed, sliding over the Miami Dolphins. 
with that win over Pittsburgh. Then Cincinnati and Cleveland. Cincinnati will be defeating Cleveland. Nobody really moved anywhere in terms of that game in that situation. Kansas City at the Chargers. Kansas City beating the Chargers. Going undefeated 17-0. Where the Chargers get knocked out of the playoffs. They lose there. They lost the tiebreaker to the Dolphins. Moving on would be Philadelphia and the New York Giants. Philadelphia moving on to 15-2, and two, knocking the Giants basically out of the playoffs. And the Minnesota Vikings would be defeating, will be getting defeated by the Detroit Lions 24-23. Thus, the Detroit Lions winning the division. Vikings still getting in with an 8-9 record. And also Chicago getting in with an 8-9 record, def- losing to Green Bay Packers, but still sliding in because of the Giants losing to the Philadelphia Eagles. Another note, the Saints go 17-0 and in this. Now remember, just like I said, this is because their schedule is so weak this season that they are favorited in all 17 games according to our model, thus giving them the 17-0 and record. We don't believe that. I don't believe that. But crazier things have happened. If you have seen some of our models and some of our past um, in some of the other sports that we handicap, you can look back. We had the our model had the Florida Panthers going to the Stanley Cup. We had the Denver Nuggets going to the NBA Finals. We didn't have them winning, but we had them there. The model sometimes can tell a good future. It might not do great in terms of betting week to week, but we can tell futures pretty good. The Saints won't go 17 and 0, but you can look at them as a sleeper definitely. On to our playoffs. We have in our first matchup in our wild card round, we have the Cincinnati Bengals playing at home against the Miami Dolphins. Here we have Cincinnati winning 27 to 23. We believe Miami, they're efficient on offense, but will turn the ball over. And their bend but don't break defense will fold against Joe Burrow. Also, Cincinnati holds the edge in this matchup with yards per play differential, turnover differential, quarterback rating differential, and also hold the edge in explosive mission efficiency. They're just a, they're just a better football team overall. Moving on, we have Buffalo Bills playing the Baltimore Ravens inside Buffalo. We have that going to Buffalo 28-21. to So this will be a game of Buffalo just putting eight in the box and forcing Lamar to beat them in the air, and that will just not happen. We don't believe that that will happen. Next will be Jacksonville Jaguars playing the Cleveland Browns. Here we have Cleveland winning this. Cleveland has the edge on offense, defense, and in special teams in terms of talent. But if you're fundamentally handicapping this, I think Peterson may have Jacksonville ready to go more than Stefanski. But the model has Cleveland and has them just narrowly winning this football game. Next would be San Francisco or Chicago Bears at San Francisco. San Francisco hold the edge literally everywhere in all aspects of the game. We don't see this being close. San Francisco by a gajillion. Next would be Minnesota Vikings at Philadelphia. Same thing, same way to handicap here. We believe that Philadelphia just holds the edge everywhere. Offense, defense, special teams, they're just far and above the Minnesota Vikings at this point. Next game would be the Dallas Cowboys at Detroit. Detroit actually holding a home game. Listen, Detroit's aggressive defense will pair well with their explosive offense, but Dallas just has too much for Detroit. They just have too much on offense. They have a bet well balanced on offense and on defense. I believe that Detroit, one or two mistakes it will cost them. And Dallas will pull it out 28 to 21 in this one. Moving on to the divisional round, Kansas City and Cleveland. Should be a pretty good game. On paper, these teams could be more even than a lot of people think, other than the quarterback position. That will be the difference in this game. So Cleveland's 27th ranked in yards per play on defense. So that would be yards per play allowed. And it just, they won't be able to limit Mahomes. So 31 to 20 looks like a good score to me if I'm handicapping this game. Next would be Buffalo going into Cincinnati. Um, This game is essentially even offenses will come down to a big stop at the end. This model's money is on Buffalo's defense to make that stop. I kind of agree, but... If you were to ask me who is more prone to make the mistake at the end of the game, Josh Allen or Joe Burrow, I'd say Josh Allen. So I might go the other way in terms of this model. 
Next game, Dallas Cowboys at the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans cruised by having the easiest schedule in the league in terms of this model, but Dallas has too much firepower and, and too much talent in all three phases of the football in the football game. The model has a close one. I do not. I think Dallas wins this by a gajillion. Philadelphia at San Francisco. I think Philly is, they're just too explosive. They're too efficient on both offense and on defense. So San Francisco just a step lower compared to Philly in all aspects of the game. And I think even if you handicap the quarterback this season, they may be a couple notches uh, lower than the Philadelphia Eagles. I have Philadelphia winning this, and so does the model. Let's move on to the conference final, where we have the where we have the Buffalo Bills going to Kansas City. This is going to be the same shit, different year. Mahomes and Allen have a shootout until Allen either coughs up the ball or throws a pick. And that one mistake is enough for Mahomes to make the difference. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen in this game. I got Kansas City moving on there. And then for Philadelphia and Dallas, it's going to be a very close game. And this is going to be their third matchup in the season. But look for Hurts to throw on Dallas. Dallas will have a hard time creating turnovers. And Philly is more explosive, more efficient, and is better in the turnover differential indicator. And that indicates a better football team over round. So look for a rematch in the Super Bowl. In the rematch in the Super Bowl, while both offense are ranked one and two for both efficiency and explosiveness for the Super Bowl, it looks like Kansas City and the defense has a better shot at making a stop in crucial moments because of just how they play in past playoffs. Their defense always shows up in the playoffs, and then Mahomes just has to do his part. Four touchdowns, he can easily get that and get it on Philly's defense, and I think that will be the outcome here always what a ride it's going to be this nfl season so if you get the football fever like we do you're in the right place remember to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on nfl weekly videos including our power ratings videos and our matchup videos right here in grandstand sports data also if you like the work that we're putting into these videos give us a like and reach as many football fans as possible it would be greatly appreciated if you shared this content Finally, comment down below on your predictions so we can keep a healthy conversation going. Thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.